so David, you, you said that uh, you had a good question to ask yourself. Uh, maybe in a way it kind of supplements this. Uh, I'm fascinated by evolutionary psychology. And this is the missing link in something that I've been working on for a very long time. You know, the Buddha never said our nature is base, basically good. There are some Buddhist groups that will say that. The Buddha never said that. What he said is we have some tendencies, greed, ill will, delusion, that are problematical, and others are very positive. And the path is about minimizing, the, eliminating the negative and developing the positive, right? Well, when we look at evolutionary psychology, I, need, I think we need to accept that there are some problematic tendencies very deeply built into us, probably genetically, right? Tendencies to exploit, uh, b because they helped get your genes into the next generation, which is the only thing that evolution really cares about, you know, in terms of what genes survive. Um, I think it was Immanuel Kant who said, of the crooked timber of humanity, nothing straight can be made. I don't know about the straight part, but the crookedness is that because of individual selection, we have some pretty selfish and self-regarding tendencies built into us. <laughs> and because of group selection, we have some wonderful positive ones as well. Mm. We have both. Mm. We have both. And our path is... Well, there's so many things to say here. When you look at, no, let me just say it this way. There, there's a Buddhist writer uh, who, who wrote a very interesting book. Uh, you are not your fault. And that is an absolutely wonderful title, right? When you were born, no one asked you, which, which traits do you want to have? They're just, they're just what we are, right? And then somebody else comes along, and given that, I realize this isn't going to make much sense, just pulling it out from the whole. What, what if, accepting that you are not your fault, Trump is not his fault? I mean, you know, what a pitiful human being in so many ways. And yet you can see it as a result. He obviously had a pretty horrible family situation, right? So what if we forgave everybody for everything? And you can see how that ties in with the unconditional love. That doesn't mean it's like, it doesn't mean we're not responsible, but it's not about guilt. It's not about I'm no good we still have to take responsibilities for whatever tendencies we have and try to, like the Buddha said, minimize the one, develop the other. But it's, it's what evolution gave us to, to work with. And it, it, it's by no means certain that it's workable. Mm -hmm. E.O. Wilson the Harvard biologist said, our basic problem is we have paleolithic emotions, mm. medieval institutions, <laughs> and godlike technology. And he's on to something, you know, paleolithic emotions or drives that were built into us by the evolutionary process, and that we haven't always done a very good job dealing with. And now we have godlike technologies that can destroy the earth. Mm. And, you know, if you had to put a bet on what's likely to happen, you know, except there's no one around to collect, <laughs> right? Or it's kind I of mean, it, it's like, okay, it, except that in a way we're a kind of experiment to the earth, you know, in a way we've also been dealt a bad hand just by the way evolution works. Mm -hmm. Okay, we accept it. And it, do you see what I'm pointing to here? A kind of <laughs> radical acceptance, even of how things can go horribly long and not feeling guilty. We'll do what we can. We don't know what's going to come out of that. But that's okay. Maybe it's our destiny to have had this wonderful mm -hmm. era in the sun for a while. And 
What I think is wonderful is that the Axial Age religions, like Christianity and Buddhism, show us a way out. They really show us the way out, but historically, they were almost immediately co-opted by the forces that they were trying to... It's like, you know, Christianity, or what Jesus taught, was immediately became institutionalized as the Roman Catholic Church in the Roman Empire, for God's sake. Or, you know, you can see the same thing in Buddhism. So, historically, the actual age traditions got co-opted. Their radical message was not... But, but the teachings survive, thanks to script. And so we have these wonderful universalist teachings that, that kind of show us the way forward, show us how we can transform ourselves if we want to do that. What's the result of that going to be? Are enough people going to want to do it in enough time? It's not something to be terribly optimistic about. But hey, <laughs> it's the only game in town. It's the only game in town. It's the only game I want to play. And it's a wonderful game to do what we can to work in that direction. I don't know if that makes any sense. 